Research on personality and health is important for a number of reasons, uh, but the most obvious is that health impacts our daily life in numerous ways and includes a wide range of health behaviors and experiences. Um, so, for example, did you brush your teeth this morning? Did you eat that extra chocolate chip cookie at lunch yesterday? Uh, do you go to the gym regularly to exercise? All of these different things are what we would consider to be health broadly defined. And there's an amassing body of literature that suggests that personality is an important predictor of all of these different types of health behaviors and experiences. So one reason why personality and health research is particularly important is because if we can identify which of these personality factors are important, then we can begin to um, think of ways that we would use personality traits to better the health and well-being of individuals in the population. So health really can be broken down into two main areas. There's physical health and mental health. Within the physical health literature, I think one of the most impressive findings is that when personality is measured in childhood, it's often associated with longevity. So for example, the trait conscientiousness or your propensity to be self-controlled, responsible, organized, um, often predicts how long you're going to live 60 years into the future, which is a really cool finding. Research has shown that uh, personality traits such as neuroticism and conscientiousness often predict a wide range of health behaviors, uh, like dieting, uh, eating behaviors, exercise behaviors, smoking and drug use, for example, as well as a number of physical health diseases um, and problems like obesity um, or cardiovascular disease, for example. Now, within the mental health literature, um, it's, off, it's also well established that personality um, is highly correlated with mental health outcomes across the lifespan. Um, so it's pretty well established that Personality traits like neuroticism are associated with pathologies like anxiety disorder and depressive disorder, um, whereas traits like poor self-regulation are often associated with um, pathologies such as conduct disorder and antisocial personality disorder, both of which involve behaviors like theft, um, destruction of property, and physical assault. Um, so given these findings and these robust links between personality and psychopathology, Researchers are starting to think about uh, where exactly the line between personality and psychopathology should be drawn, um, and to also question whether psychopathology should be considered categorically distinct from personality or whether it should be considered on the same continuum as personality, just more at the severe ends of the spectrum. One of the main issues that researchers are currently facing um, in both the literature on personality and physical health and personality and mental health um, are directionality issues. So is it the case that personality is an important precursor to these health uh, problems and outcomes, or is it that the experience of these health problems then subsequently change your personality? Or maybe it's a combination of both. Uh, maybe it's, in fact, that both of these different pathways are at play. Um, so you can think about how this might play out in the real world um, by thinking about the trait conscientiousness, for example. Um, so let's say there's someone who is low on conscientiousness. Maybe their risk for cardiovascular disease is uh, particularly high because uh, they eat poorly, they don't exercise as often, uh, they drink alcohol more often. Um, and all of the physiological processes that are associated with that. But on the other hand, you could think that if I'm diagnosed with cardiovascular disease, um, then maybe my experience of that disease subsequently changes my personality in important ways, um, either due to the physiological limitations or the social limitations that having this disease places on my daily life and subsequently my personality. So answering these questions of directionality really allow us to move beyond the traditional and static uh, correlational studies that we have of the association between personality and health, and rather allow us to e examine the association between personality and health uh, to be both dynamic and reciprocal, and that both of them are influencing each other over the lifespan especially since we know that both personality and health change over time. I think there are two main directions that research on personality and health are going in the future. 
The first is through basic research, uh, where personality scientists will begin to push these associations between personality and health a little bit further um, to disentangle the general environmental conditions under which personality influences health, and also the mediating mechanisms that explain exactly why personality and health are associated. I think the second future direction is through applied research. So um, taking what we know from research on personality and health and applying it to people in the real world. Um, given that these are very tangible constructs that many people experience on a daily basis, um, it's easy to think how we could translate personality research to then um, help individuals in the population. So for example, some researchers have started pairing up with physicians uh, to develop new programs that identify which patients might be good or bad at adhering to doctor recommendations, for example. Um, with the idea that if they know which patients are good or bad at adhering to these recommendations, then they can begin um, to target specific aspects of the individual um, to improve their health outcomes in particular. Um, so this takes more of a one size, or instead of a one size fits all approach, this takes a more targeted approach towards the individual.